How about in a sense of um, adding other things to the entertainment? Are there any other big plans for, for Britannia with entertainment? I, I think our, um, our ambition and our vision for uh, entertainment on Britannia has been uh, Broadway and the West End. So mm. the West End, we know that we are, I think, and I would say this because I'm a, I'm a Brit, I think we offer the best entertainment out there. So mm. what we've done is we've looked at Broadway very closely as well as the West End, and we've created in our 900 seat theatre, we've got an LED screen as a backdrop. So we can go from the hills of the hills of, uh, of Scotland, right way through to the beaches of Cornwall, right way through to Sydney Harbour Bridge, or whatever it may be, we can do that in a heartbeat. So we can have lots of different shows at different times. It'll be an extraordinary experience for, for anybody who comes on board. And I know one thing that's been quite controversial is this big flag that you're, yes, you're putting literally. on the outside of the shed, but which obviously is very patriotic. It, yeah. you know, we know that P&O Cruises are a very British product and we're proud, you know, proud of that. Um, what, what, what's the thinking? Is, is, it, is it about making that big bold statement? I think as, as our these extraordinary assets, these extraordinary ships sail around the world. I am, and I know those that cruise with us, and we, we are so proud of who we are and what we do. And I'm terribly proud to be English and British. I'm terribly proud to be part of the amazing story that is this country. And I think Great Britain is going through a real resurgence at the moment. I think mm. we are coming out of some very difficult years. And I think now is a time for us all to be celebrating what we do and who we are as a nation. And I think P&O Cruises because we are the only dedicated British cruise holiday maker. I, I can say everybody says they do it, but I know that P&O cruises really are quintessentially for the, for the Brits. Okay. Then I think it's absolutely right that we do add a signature to the bow of our great ship, or to all of our ships. I think it's the right thing to do. The most important thing is that I did ask our passengers before doing it. Ah, so I did okay. make sure that everybody felt, those that cruise with us, those that might think about cruising with us, and those that cruise with our competitors. And actually we got some really great feedback from passengers, past, present potentials. And they all said, you know, that, that if that's what P&O Cruises is proud for and proud of, then absolutely right, they should put it on the bow. So we're really pleased about it. Now, obviously Britannia was floated out recently. That, yeah. was, that was just, you know, kind of last week. Uh, did that go well? Were you, you were obviously there. I was there. So it was, uh, it was Valentine's Day in Italy. It was a beautiful day. I'm afraid it was raining here, as it has done recently, <laughs> but it was a beautiful day. And it was a, for me, it was a particularly emotional moment as I watched water for the very first time go under the hull of this extraordinary structure there were about I suppose 11 1200 Italians who had built this extraordinary ship all hugging each other these big hairy Italians <laughs> hugging each other as we played the Italian and the national anthem of, of, of Great Britain it was a that was a it was a it was an amazing moment actually it was a really it was a fabulous fabulous day and I think the beginning of something really truly great so she has sea trials now comes back and then we we go on sale for the, the big sale on 27th of March, although people can pre-register now for her. Yeah, this is it, we're a big thing of people pre-registering already and yeah. getting in, because obviously it's gonna, I'm sure, go pretty crazy first thing in the morning when uh, when, when it does go on sale. Yeah, I mean, we had, when we jammed. went to pre-registration on the 14th, um, you know, we I think we, we sold more, but we sold more cabins in the first day of pretending in the first week when when Azura came on board. So Incredible. there's some real interest out there, which I'm absolutely delighted about. But of course, the key for me is that uh, Britannia is only one of seven or eight it will be so actually I'm much more interested in the guys coming in and holidaying with us in 2014. Well this is this is true because uh, 2014 has been an important year for instance you've you repositioned Ventura yes you know your, your kind of lovely big family friendly all singing or dancing ship yeah. and you put her out to Venice and Genoa for That's the Fly right. Med That's program right. for the first time yeah. how's that going is it being successful? It's, it's going really well um, I think it's a the challenge for me was that it actually I had probably misunderstood the importance that passengers, P&O Cruises passengers had had with uh, Southampton being the place that they could take off for their holiday. I thought, well, why does that matter? And so actually trying to encourage and educate and tell people that actually you can get on a plane, one of 12 regional airports, fly straight out to the ship and you're in the sunshine and you're on board enjoying yourself. So it's, it's price-wise, it's about right. In terms of having seven holidays for, for the price of one, that's great because you get a, all these different ports. The key for me is the, the ability for passengers to be able to fly straight to their holiday. And that's worked really, really well. So I think that we're, we're getting a lot more passengers from the north coming down because they're making use of the airports rather than having the, the Evesway coaches all the way down to Southampton. So it's definitely bringing uh, a lot of newcomers to the cruise, which I'm really excited about. Well, obviously people get to fly to the heat straight away rather than having that yeah. that two you know two day maybe sail out of uh, Southampton yeah. where it's still a little bit chilly sometimes, depending I, on the I weather. I think that's right. That said, mm. the ex-Southampton 
cruise will always be what an amazing opportunity you don't have to queue for the airport you can take as much baggage as you like mm. uh, and and you're already your, your holiday starts as soon as you step on board so i think for me there's there's, de there's definitely pluses on both sides i think it's striking that balance yeah i think so and, I, and actually in the end it comes down to what sort of what stage of life you're at because if you want to put the family on a plane get them straight out and your holiday's there for seven nights fine but if you want to go on a you know 14 or a 28 night cruise take your time straight from southampton leave the car where it's safe etc you know that you can do as well so i think it's, it is a balance it's attracting a different demographic which you know i i, I would I, I saw myself when i was you know with different companies i've worked for is is that a big thing are you finding that you've got a much younger a younger demographic now for ventura during the fly season Definitely, we're definitely seeing during the school holidays, we are seeing the younger demographic, yes. Okay. The, the, I suppose the statistic I get so excited about is that only 3% of people of this country cruise on a regular basis. So it's, only, mm. it's a really small penetration. So we, Planet Cruise, P&O Cruise, have got such an opportunity to evangelise. And I think for somebody like me who comes into this industry new and fresh and excited about it, I just can't wait to tell people about what an incredible holiday it is. So, yes, we are going to get the next generation coming through, particularly to our flying fly Mediterranean cruises. That said, I, I just think any, any cruise is an, is an amazing experience. And I love telling people about it. <laughs> I can see it's good. Enthusiasm is a good thing. Passion is a good thing.